the M4 Mac Mini is actually a powerful beast. And as promised in my previous video, we're gonna put this little baby to the test today. What about the unboxing? Now, you've seen those videos already. It's cute, affordable, and it came inside a box. Here, we're gonna do some proper testing. By the way, thank you so much to all of you who liked, shared, commented in my previous videos with all your suggestions. It basically made this video possible. It truly means a lot to me as a creator and it keeps me going basically. And a huge welcome as well to all the 700 people who subscribed from that last video as well. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. To recap, the question we're trying to answer is, is the base model enough for heavier workloads or are the memory, storage and CPU upgrades from Apple worth it? First off, I wanna give a shout out to the three of you whose suggestions basically made this video happen. There's plenty more coming from the suggestions, but these are the three ones that I picked today. These viewers had some brilliant ideas for me to test today. And as a thank you, I'll be sending them a cool tech gadget. I will be reaching out to the three of you directly in my comments here on YouTube. So keep an eye out for that. Let's start with Blender 3D rendering. I've loaded some really complex scene here with high detail textures, lighting, reflections. It's a pretty hefty scene here, you know, with lots of environment details as well. First, we're testing the viewport performance, just moving the scene around to see if it's smooth while editing. I'm not really a, a Blender guy, but just navigating and, you know, around the model, just moving things around, just to see if there were any lags or, you know, making changes here and there, just to see if this it felt smooth. As you can see here, Blender wasn't the only thing open as well. I had, you know, quite a bit going on here on the Mac Mini. And the interesting thing for me was when I set it to do a full render. Okay, fair enough. With multitasking and lots of other tabs open as well, it was kind of, you know, saying that it was gonna take over two hours to complete. Once I closed everything, that dropped to about 45 minutes. Personally, for something as detailed as this model, I thought that was pretty awesome, right? Quite impressive. Let me know what you think though, if you are a Blender expert or you use it a lot, you know, let me know if that's good enough or not, because to me, it surely didn't look too bad, right? Honestly, the Mac Mini so far is really holding up with a lot of tasks that are way better than I expected. For a base model, you know, a $600 machine to do this, yeah, that to me is pretty next level stuff now. He was managing the scene smoothly, as you can see in the viewport. And while the render isn't lightning fast, you know, it's still handling extremely well. And more importantly, I can crack on with other work whilst it's doing the rendering without any lags and anything either. And considering that I went actually a little bit further here and opened this group of Chrome tabs with 40 tabs in there, it makes this even more impressive to me. These aren't just static websites either, but it's a good mix of websites that will generate a realistic load as well by keeping GPU, CPU, and the network activity engaged. I've signed into all the websites that I could as well in, in this 40 ones and interacted with every single one of them. And take a look at this. As you can see at one point during this setup that I was doing here, these tabs together with a Windows VM that I was running as well, accounted for 14 gig of RAM. And we did see go red at one point. And during that time, yeah, the Mac did struggle and eventually he asked me to close some applications. So we're definitely getting to the limit here when you get close to 40 tabs open and if you have another, you know, a couple of heavier apps like Blender and Parallels with Windows 11 running. To be honest though, you know, when you think about it, that's a pretty crazy amount of things to have open and it's fairly unrealistic, even with the Pro chip, you know, let alone with the base model. So I think it's done a great job so far. The next test though was gaming. And I tried three different types of gaming. Natively playing Resident Evil on the Mac, inside a Windows 11 machine using Parallels playing Civilization 6 via Steam. The ambition there was to run Cyberpunk 2077 on the VM, but it was a bridge too far. I'll get to Cyberpunk in a minute. That sort of game really needs direct access to the GPU and much newer DirectX support as well. You know, I didn't give up. <laughs> so I also went out and bought myself a license for a crossover, which did allow me to run that game. It's been a pretty hefty 48 hours, let's put it that way. But before I played Cyberpunk, I got to try a couple of other games as well. Resident Evil 4 running natively on the Mac looked and felt fantastic to play. No lags whatsoever. And I did set everything to high here because I thought, you know, it's running on the Mac. It's, you know, it's the game that Apple always shows on their events. All the shadow effects, lighting detail, 
I fully expected this to be slow and laggy, but honestly, it felt like I was playing on my gaming rig. You know, it's that good. Civilization 6 inside that Windows VM with Parallels and, you know, via Steam also run fantastic. And I tried several, you know, different configurations, but the benchmark rarely reached you know, that 60 FPS that, you know, gamers love. It averaged in the end to about 30, 35 FPS. For this game, and to my eyes, it looked amazing anyway, and it felt good to play as well. And there was no lags or any stutters. I tell you what really impressed me actually, it was the speakers on this thing. I mean, look at how small it is. I forgot to plug in some speakers and it really took me by surprise when I started to play the game. units like scouts are unique the previous Mac Mini, if you have one or if you've tried it, had terrible speakers, right? So this was a really nice upgrade as well that I wasn't expecting. Now, Cyberpunk 27.7 was the game that many of you asked me to try. I didn't even know it was possible, to be honest. And wow, is the only word I can <laughs> come up with, right? I'm still in shock because it was just a few hours ago that I was trying. It's such a heavy game. You know, because the graphics that it needs to, to run the game is just insane. As I said, I did have to buy crossover and really fiddle with it a little bit. There's something called Wine and there's different versions and it got quite technical and quite troubleshooting intensive in there. And I almost gave up. But after a few forums and, you know, a lot, a lot of troubleshooting, I got it to run. It's only 30 FPS as well, but the fact that I can play this game at all on something like this is saying a lot about this Mac. And it looks good too, not just playable, I should really connect a controller here because, you know, as you can see, my movement is very jerky just on the keyboard. So I think with the controller, it would be a lot smoother, the movement, but I was pretty happy with this. The next test was also an extremely challenging one and not just from a technical perspective, but because I never done it before. So I had to learn LLM models, how to download, what tools to use. Many of you suggested this. So I, I kind of spent a few hours yesterday just, you know, teaching myself how to do it. So I run a couple of complex models in here to test and so we're using Olema to download the models and Lemma 3.2. This prompt or a variation of this prompt is designed to really push the Mac Mini with deep reasoning and long form storytelling. So you're basically telling the AI to get really creative and to mix ideas. Things did get quite abstract at one point, but the fact that I was able to do this in seconds on a machine that cost $600 blows my mind. It really does. There are three reasons really why this test is a, is a challenging test for any computer. One is because of the complexity of the of the prompt and the length of the prompt as well. I'm asking for 2,000, 3,000 words and it just kept doing it, right? The, the second reason is reasoning and the depth of the analysis. And the third reason, you know, it requires multi-step thinking, which is quite a new thing as I understand in, in LLMs. It really pushes the memory and the processing power on this. The crazy thing is the test finishes faster than I can <laughs> I can look for something to go and monitor the test. You know, it's it's just amazing, right? The CPU, it during these things doesn't do much at all because LLMs are meant to run on, on the GPU. And as expected, you know, that's doing all of the work. I'm not an expert in this field either. As you can see, I've literally had hours of <laughs> training on this, but to me, it feels really, really impressive. But for those of you who understand this a bit more, please do tell me, I'm happy to run it again in, in different parameters. But my perception of someone who just used computers, you know, pretty much for 30 years now, is that if you're interested in doing AI tasks, and you're on a budget, you know, this shows what, you know, what you can do on this base model here. And to me, it looks like it has serious potential. Now to test multitasking, I created 40 tabs that I showed you earlier, a mix of YouTube, Netflix, Google Docs, news, social media stuff, shopping, and loads more, all to simulate like a real world browsing session, right? And everything, like I said, is logged in and is interacting and doing things on those tabs, right? Surprisingly, the Mac Mini, again, is really staying strong here. You know, we did see a huge spike in memory usage. As soon as you open the, that group of 40 tabs, you see straight away go to the orange and some swap being used. But it took me running a Windows machine, Blender, and a couple of other apps for me to see the Mac basically saying, sorry, you know, I've got to stop here. You've got, you've got to close some stuff. But yeah, I found 40 very busy tabs by itself. Feels like that's the limit here, the upper limit anyway. You can probably go a bit over depending on what those tabs are doing but I think 40 is a good number for you to still have a little bit of headroom, you know, for a couple of other apps in there. And in that scenario, it's not crashing or lagging at all. If you do work with more than 40, 50 tabs, and you multitask heavily, then, you know, the 24 gig or the 32 gig RAM upgrade is gonna be something to consider here because the CPU is not doing much. As I expected, right, throughout this 
all these tests. And as I said in my previous video, the CPU upgrade for me is going to be a very unique uh, case. Why? Because it's not doing much in, in a lot of these heavy task scenarios, whereas the GPU and the memory, I think, will be the two things to consider here. Of course, you know, the likelihood is that if you need more GPU, you are going to need the Pro anyway. Now let's get a little bit more serious with video production. I'm a YouTuber, right? So I've got to try that. But a lot of you asked me for that as well. So I'm exporting a fairly long 4K video here. We always see people try, you know, five, 10 minute clip and a couple of layers of 4K videos. I'm like, yeah, you know, my, my phone can do that, right? So I thought I'd push it a bit further here and with a much longer 4K video in ProRes 422 using Final Cut Pro, of course, but some plugins as well from Motion VFX, which is what I use in these videos. And when I say the video was much longer than five, 10 minutes, it's a 45 minute long video. And as you can see here on the screen, right, it's packed with layers, with effects, and color grading. It's perfect for testing any rendering capability, right? But watching it work through the Explore, I have to say, is not too shabby for a base model. It's, you know, it's not gonna be as fast as my higher end Mac here, my M1 Max MacBook Pro, which exports that same video in, I don't know, maybe three or four times faster. It's still getting the job done, right? Even with multiple layers and effects without crashing or anything. For much more realistic videos, like a 10 minute 4K video with not as many crazy layers and effects, we're talking less than 10 minutes to export. So I think if that's your use case, the base model is more than okay. And if you're happy to wait, 15, 20 minutes when that video is a little bit more involved, this is fine. Now, this one was probably the most requested test, which is audio production in Logic Pro or any door, but I tried Logic Pro. I've loaded 50 tracks, about 40 tracks actually here, using samples from artlist.io. Uh, so I downloaded the stems, all in wave uh, format as well, including things like drums, synths, vocals. I don't know what I'm doing to be honest with you, but you know, again, I had to learn a little bit how to use this thing. But I've added you know, plenty of effects like reverb, compression, delay, plus some automation on volume and panning and things like that. There's a lot more that I could have done here and I think the Mac would have coped with it as well, but I just run out of time. As far as I can tell though, playback is smooth. There's, there was no pauses or any, you know, any lags at all, even with those effects and automation. And when I went to bounce this very complex track, at least I thought it was complex, I thought this is gonna take at least 10, 15 minutes. And it was like, a few seconds, right? And I was amazed by it. Again, let me know if you think that that's impressive or not, or or if you think I should be trying something heavier. Overall, Logic Pro for me run very smoothly as well, you know, even with this high track count. And for audio production, the Mac mini base model here is definitely holding up well. You know, I don't know how, how much more complexity you can add to tracks, but it felt pretty good. I mean, this track is quite a long one as well. Most music tracks are not that long. I'm not a music producer, as you can tell, <laughs> but I'm going with the guidance that I found on the internet and using some of the comments as well, some of the, your suggestions. I'm probably missing stuff here, but I do hope that this was at least close to realistic. <sighs> you thought I was done? I also exported 200 raw images in Lightroom. Look, I, I started with 1500 initially, but you know, that definitely killed the Mac. It, it froze and it, it threw all sorts of errors, but 200 raw images using Bridge, opening the images in Camera Raw, you know, doing some changes in there, making some edits, applying those edits in batch to lots of different images, then opening them in Lightroom and exporting them, you know, in, in raw format. Honestly, it was so quick again that I gave up trying to time it. It was exporting basically instantly, you know, 200 images in raw. Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of a, a very high-end scenario there for most people. For me, I just need maybe 10, 15 at the time when I'm doing a thumbnail or whatever. So more than good enough for me. To give you an idea of where this leaves me, you know, I don't want to get too excited in here because it's two days by with this machine, but at the very least, this is making me reconsider my, my next upgrade. I've got my MacBook Pro here, my M1 Max, and it doesn't move that much as a laptop, right? So I'm, I'm thinking perhaps this could become my fixed machine in here. Now this probably still has another year on it. And maybe I use something like a Mac mini at home when I edit at home instead of carrying the laptop home. Look, as I thought, the base model M4 managed, you know, to do everything that I threw at it from 3D rendering, virtual machine, you know, gaming and AI tasks and intensive browsing, video editing, audio production. <laughs> Look, I'm out of breath. It's not perfect. I mean, if you are, for example, you know, really relying on Windows stuff and you, you want a beefy Windows machine, 
there are alternatives in there like the one I reviewed um, a couple of weeks ago. If you are doing this level of work that I showed you here today or more and you want to future proof your, your investment, right? Then I'd say a RAM upgrade might be the smart move here. There was a glimmer of hope earlier when I saw something online that you know could suggest that we could upgrade the memory or the SSD, but it looks like it's not that easy. It feels like Apple is going somewhere with this because they made it at least removable. Overall for the price, this little machine anyway, as it is, has proven it's worth for me, you know, uh, 10 times over. I will put it against the pro version anyway, because I ordered that as well and see how that behaves. And thanks again to everyone who sent your ideas and you've really helped me with this video. This became a community project effectively. And the good news is there were so many good ideas that I will be doing another video like this covering even more test scenarios. So honestly, I'm really excited to see what the Mac mini does and how it performs with all of these challenges lined up yeah to me as a creator look it's it really makes these videos a lot more interesting when you are part of it as well if you're not subscribed yet have a look at my channel and if you like my stuff that would be awesome to have you here and if you found this video helpful share it with your friends as well put it on that whatsapp group let's keep geeking out on this little guy here see you soon